Hello, good evening. In this case, uh, it's been an extremely busy week for me, and I'm finally getting to this re to the reflection for this uh, 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, please accept my apologies at being so late. Uh, the uh, book, just quickly with the book of Exodus, at the very last line. So the Lord repented in punishment, uh, in the punishment that he had threatened to inflict on his people. Theme of forgiveness for this Sunday. Forgiveness Sunday. And then, uh, again, in the second reading, for Paul, uh, I once was a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant. Indeed, the grace of the Lord has been abundant. His grace of being merciful and forgiving. Christ, uh, another line about halfway through, this is this is a very important line. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh, if once we declare ourselves, recognize the fact we are sinners, then we can accept. We can have a savior. The Pharisees' problem was they thought they were not sinners. They and secondly, they could always always save themselves. If, if you think you can save yourself and don't need a God, uh, the devil has really captured you, and uh, you're beyond hope. You got to. We have to turn around and say, no, no, I am not able to save myself. Only God can. Now, this wonderful reading that goes on and on, um, especially the uh, prodigal son parable. Uh, in past, I've always uh, put the emphasis. Often, put the emphasis. Not always. Uh, put the emphasis on the prodigal son, which is that's a traditional name we give him, on the son who uh, just throw, throws away all of his money, uh, his father's money. And of course, the implication is uh, the only way to get an inheritance, he says to his father, basically, uh, as far as you're concerned, I, I'm, uh, I'm dead. As far as I'm concerned, you're dead. So give me my inheritance. Uh, I give you what belongs to me, uh, and I'll take it. And then, uh, this is a horrific sin. It's not so much the throwing away the money, or the most of us will be horrified, because it takes so much work to get the money. But even more important is the fact that he's thrown away himself uh, on, on a life of sin, and, uh, where he never really appreciates his father, uh, and just think it's all about money and having fun. Uh, you know, we think that kind of a theme, the whole, it's just all about having fun, is very modern, but it's not. Uh, now, what I'd like to point out are the basic themes that I see that are, I wouldn't say new, but a new way for me to look at it. The first theme is that of forgiveness. All uh, forgiveness in the sense, it's just like, a, a, uh, like Macy's or uh, J.C. Penney, or uh, Bloomingdale's, uh, all returns are accepted. And that's Jesus' policy, God's policy. All returns are accepted. When we come back to him, we return ourselves to him and say, I was lost and now I am found, like amazing grace. Uh, then there's great joy in heaven. But he has open arms to accept us as we return to him. So great is God's loving kindness. So as the, the, the theme is, so the Lord repented God's forgiveness out of the first reading. The second uh, theme area is joy. Special intensi intensity and rush, uh, rush of joy at the, the uh, repentant soul coming back. Uh, at last... At, at those uh, repented, uh, the great joy at those lost and now found themselves returning themselves to the Lord. Uh, what great joy! And that's the love of the Lord. That shows the intensity of the love of the Lord for us. That even while we're sinners, He still loves us and He uh, gives us the grace to return. And uh, for those for whom that grace works because we accept the grace, then there's just intense joy over us. So great is his joy. They were dead and come to life again. 
in the Lord. The next theme I'd like to go on to is really the elder son, the older son, uh, which I'll very often could be ourselves. We could associate more with the elder son than the prodigal son. Most of us would be listening to this. Or be going to church, be going to church on a Sunday. The joy of the father and the son who's always with him is a daily delight and can, contentment to be with loyal sons and daughters, to be with family. When we're with him all the time, we're his family, right here on earth, and even more in heaven. Uh, he has a daily delight and contentment in us. Now that extra surge of contentment is not there because we're with him always. Uh, that's a special thing at the return of someone who was lost. Uh, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have great joy in us. He has a daily delight and contentment in us, who are, who are his loyal sons and daughters, his family. And one of the, uh, uh, right before the prodigal son parable, in the, the uh, reading from the New Testament that we have, uh, over the uh, particular parable, what woman having ten coins, and going down to the bottom there, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels in heaven over one sinner who repents. Which is to say, not just the Father, God the Father rejoices, but all of heaven rejoices with God the Father. Whatever God the Father does, whatever God does, God, Son, Holy Spirit, then all of heaven joins because we are one family. Uh, so we don't stand back and get all upset. It, about the older brother, that sounds, it seems that he wasn't truly family with his father. He didn't have that sense of being family with his father. He just went out there and did his daily task out of a sense of um, obligation and responsibility. But if we really have a sense of being family, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to us. Okay. If there are losses, we, we are sad. If there are, are joys, we rejoice. Whatever the Father does, we are one with Him. Now we must celebrate, because your brother, when the brother returns, the son sees this, and he talks to the father, he says, and your son, I read that, but when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes. Now he's talking about your son, not my brother. He's not my brother. But then the father comes back to him and says, oh no, not only is he my son, since I am your father, he is also your brother. And he's still your brother, even though he did these horrendous things. So be one with me in rejoicing at the return of your brother, who's also, God would say, my son. We are family. We join in this together. And the last thing, this is a tremendously important line. My son, you're here with me always. Everything I have is yours. Oh, it's so important to realize that we, when we are in God's family, or at least attempting to be more and more his sons and daughters, less sinners, more saints, uh, as members of his family, that everything he has is ours. The most repeated thing that I can find in the New Testament is uh, uh, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened to you. What he's saying there is what he's just saying right here. Everything I have is yours. I'm ready, willing. Oh my, would I love to help you, my dear son and my dear daughter. I will give you everything in heaven so that you might be more and more mine. God bless you all in this wonderful adventure of becoming more of God's holy people, his family.